I'm Steven Stomsky with Stomsky Racing. Today we're going to demonstrate our SR090 GT3 cam timing apparatus, our Digitix digital degree wheel, and our live top dead center indicator. We're going to be demonstrating these tools on a GT3 street engine. It's a 2004 GT3. And while it does have a Vario cam for for the intake cam, the exhaust cam is a fixed cam and as such we'll be able to demonstrate these tools to be used on the cup engines as well. It will give us a reference point and show how the intake cam phases in and out and it'll give you a reference point as to in the baseline as to how these cams are set up on the street engines and on the GT2 and the turbo engines as well. The first step is what we've already done and that is to mount the digital degree wheel, our Digidix. That's done and it's already mounted. We will show how to set up for top dead centering with that, but before before you do, you need to set the, set the tool up. We'll show how to do that in another video. For now, it's, it's, it's done. The first step is, from here, is then to go ahead and mount the top dead center indicator and the SR090 GT3 cam timing apparatus. And First of all, notice the cam position, and this is on, on Z1, uh, top dead center overlap, for cylinder number one. This is a, a, the rough end position for, for the cams to start. Having, making sure that the GT3 cam timing apparatus is set up for the left bank, one through three, and that means that the exhaust indicator is over the exhaust cam and the intake is over the intake cam using a Allen wrench, a five millimeter Allen wrench, slowly walk the Allen bolts down to anchor alternating from front to back to anchor the tool in place. Just confirming that the pads of the indicators or over the cams, making sure that the red indicator is over the exhaust and the blue indicator is over the intake cam. That's important because the angles are different. Once all, once the two bolts are locked down, this, this gently secure it, doesn't have to be torqued down or anything, but you need to have it anchored. Also make sure that the center bolt is snug as well and lock down the thumb screws so that they're secure. This point here, we now want to, now want to mount our top dead center indicator and that simply dials in. The live top dead, in, in this top dead center indicator simply threads into the spark plug hole. If it's the first time using the tool, just make sure you put a little bit of machine oil on the threads. It'll help thread it in. Snug it down and then spin the indicator so whichever direction you need it to, to see need to see it is facing you and I'm going to work from the front end front end of the engine here in a second. I also position top of the Digidix so that I can see the display from the front of the engine as well. Um, for the most part all these gauges are independent you don't need to see all of them at once you're not working with four different reference points at once generally at any point you're only working with two and the first case is going to be our, our Digidix and the top dead center indicator and then we'll go to the exhaust cam in the top uh, in the Digidix and then we'll go to the intake cam in the Digidix. You know, it's not sensory overload at this point. Now the next step is we're going to tilt this up so it's uh, heads up and we're going to start to rotate the engine over and set top dead center. Now I've just turned our Digidix on so it's an irrelevant number because nothing's been synced up. But I'm a few degrees out of top dead center it, as I had set up the cams and as I knew as I put all the, the apparatus in place. And as I come up to top dead center, I'm going to be watching 
the center gauge here and looking for the limit of its travel, of this piston's travel. And it looks like we're right about there now. I'm just going to put this to zero. So we have a reference. And there's our dwell. And that's what we're going to end up doing is splitting the dwell. The first point is, I'm just going to back it up a little bit and there we are at dwell again. As soon as it hits, I'm going to zero out our digital degree wheel and then continue to rotate until I see the indicator start to move again. And there it goes. And we're just about seven degrees showing that the dwell for the number one piston is about seven degree dwell. And I'm just going to split that difference, back it up to about three and a half. and zero out our Digidix. Now we have calculated pure top dead center. Next step is, is we're going to go ahead and rotate the engine around and since we're reading off the cam lobe itself and not the bucket have to realize that the cam is going to be 180 degrees out of position in relationship to the degrees on what would be a normal on a normal degree wheel. But you'll, you'll get that, get the hand, handle on that once, uh, once we get to that point. Starting to rotate the engine now, and the only two gauges that we really need to be concerned about are, because we're working on the exhaust cam, is our exhaust indicator and our Digidix. We could, for all intents and purposes, take out our top dead center indicator. We've already, we've already determined where top dead center is, but we'll just leave it there for now. I'm just going to go ahead and rotate the engine and you'll see how the cams come on and off. Now right now we're at approximately maximum opening pressure for number one exhaust but the number is irrelevant on the digital degree wheel because we actually want to measure that as 180 degrees out because we're coming off the off the cam lobe itself. Come around, starting to come up, and we're going to start to measure again looking for the dwell Getting closer. Looks like we're right around 250 degrees is where and that's where we're supposed to be. And now it's starting to come back off. Now I'm going to check this one more time. Let's get another reference point. It's very 60. Now we're going to come back up on. And we're looking for somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 degrees on this exhaust cam. We'll have a specific number here in a second. Looking to see where the dwell starts and where it ends. And we want to be right in the middle as far as our timing goes. Started at 240 and ended at 250 that time.
That's just about dead on at 250. Which by calculation shows that the timing is a that it's at 110 degrees on the exhaust cam. The next thing we're going to do is now we're going to go over and do the, the intake cam. But uh, we don't even have to change anything. All we're doing is going to change our reference point and we'll move our digital degree wheel so that we can more easily see it in relationship to the indicator uh, for the exhaust. I haven't done anything other than moving dig the Digitex display over towards the, the intake indicator here. And I'm going to continue to rotate. Now because this is a a Vario cam, you don't have a, a fixed number as we had um, on the exhaust cam. We have a range and we had a, a minor dwell for our exhaust cam. We're going to have a major dwell somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 degrees on, on the intake cam. And what we're looking for is where the dwell starts and where the dwell ends. And that is going to be how we set the timing on the on the for the intake cam on GT3 Vario cam. Now we're going to be coming up onto the cam here, and there's going to be some noises. That's the the Vario cam taking taking its effect here. And as I continue to rotate, I'm looking again for the dwell to start. Looks like it started at about 152, which is absolute bullshit. So we're gonna have to shut that off because 152. Where the hell did I get 152? So we've reset all this. Shut. We're going to measure intake cam for number one, and the cam is just past maximum opening pressure now. Starting to rotate around, come up. I'm going to measure dwell intake number one. Cam okay, starting to contact. Measure for dwell in here. Dwell starting just past 83. And it comes off just about at. 142. We'll go past that one more time and check it. Cam's just about on the bucket now. Maximum opening pressure. Measure the camshaft 180 degrees out from there. Foot starting to come up. Dwell starting at 83 and a half, coming off at just about 142.